Hey everyone, this is Peter, and welcome to Guest Adventures, where everyone is a guest, including me. Today's adventure is going to be Comerica Park in Detroit, Michigan, for the Detroit Tigers versus the Oakland Athletics. Welcome everyone to Comerica Park, the Major League Baseball home of the Detroit Tigers since the year 2000. The stadium itself is located 2100 Woodward Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. And yes, that's the famous Woodward Avenue. When the stadium first opened, it had a capacity of 40,120 people. That was from the opening in 2000 to the year 2002. In 2003, they expanded the capacity to 41,070, and they did that for a couple reasons. The main reason being, it was too hard to hit home runs for right-handed hitters, because the left field line was too far down. The bullpens used to be located directly below us here in right field. The bullpens were stacked one on top of each other. Uh, it was great for the fans because there was a walkway between the stands and the bullpens where the pitchers used to actually come out onto the field. You can kind of see the inlet right there. And what would happen is the fans would stay to the wall and drop baseballs down. The pitchers would sign them and throw them back up. But they moved the bullpens to left field to shorten the fence in left field and then added some seats there in the right field area. The flagpole that's in Comerica Park was the same flagpole that was in Tiger Stadium. It was moved and put in play at Comerica Park as a homage to the stadium and Tiger Stadium. The flagpole always in play. If the ball hit it, you had to play it. You never knew which way it was going to go. But when they moved the bullpens in Comerica Park, the flagpole became considered a home run as it was now behind the wall and not in the field of play. The grounds crew is led by Heather Nabosny, a graduate of Michigan State University in turf management. The mascot of the Detroit Tigers is the ever energetic paws seen here dancing around. The first game played at Comerica Park was on Tuesday, April 11, 2000, with 39,168 spectators attending. It was a cold, snowy afternoon. Temperature was 36 degrees Fahrenheit. In the game, the Tigers beat the Seattle Mariners 5-2. The winning pitcher was Brian Moeller. Brian Moeller was also the winning pitcher in the last game at Tiger Stadium the year before. The ball that was used for the last pitch of the game in Tiger Stadium was the same ball that Brian Moeller threw for the first pitch in the Comerica Park Stadium. That ball was sent at the end of the 1999 season to the commissioner's office and held until the opening of the 2000 season. After the pitch was thrown, the ball was put in Cooperstown in the Hall of Fame. Comerica Park is currently the only ballpark in Major League Baseball to feature a distinctive dirt strip between home plate and the pitcher's mound. 
The strip, sometimes known as the keyhole, was common in early ballparks, but is very rare in modern facilities. Additionally, the home plate area is in the shape of the home plate itself, and not as a standard circle. When installed, the scoreboard was the largest in Major League Baseball. It's since been trumped by some other stadiums. Interesting fact is that the scoreboard was installed in the wrong area. It should have been farther to the right, so it would not have any obstructed view from any seat in Comerica Park. It wasn't until after the scoreboard was actually installed that they realized it was put in the wrong spot and could not be moved. On the wall to the right are the retired numbers of the Detroit Tigers and the names of the players who have had their numbers retired. This also includes Ty Cobb, who did not wear a number of the Detroit Tigers at that time, but his name is on the wall as a retired no jersey number. When the park first opened, many of the players remarked at how large it was and how long left field was. Bobby Higginson, who played outfield for the Detroit Tigers, used to call the stadium Comerica National Park because of its large size. That was before the bullpens were moved. In 2005, Comerico Park hosted the 76th Major League Baseball All-Star Game, the first to be played in Detroit since 1971. The first playoff game at Comerico Park was played on October 6, 2006 against the New York Yankees. On October 21, 2006, the first World Series game was played.
The first no-hitter in Comerica Park history was thrown by Justin Verlander on June 12, 2007. It was also the first no-hitter thrown by a Tiger in the city of Detroit since Virgil Trucks accomplished the feat in 1952. In 2012, Comerica Park hosted its second World Series. The Tigers, however, were swept by the San Francisco Giants. On April 23, 2022, Detroit Tiger slugger Miguel Cabrera became the 33rd player in Major League history to get 3,000 hits when he hit a single in the first inning at Comerica Park off the Colorado Rockies. Out on the left field wall is a tally of the number of home runs and base hits that Miguel Cabrera has at the time of filming 503 home runs, 3,009 hits. A fan gets to change that number during the game when he accomplishes either of those feats. There are eight heroic-sized tiger statues throughout the park, including two prowling on top of the scoreboard in left field. Their eyes light up after a tiger's home run or victory, and the sound of a growling tiger plays throughout the stadium as well. A giant fountain is located behind center field. General Motors sponsored the fountain from 2000 to 2008 and used the area to showcase GM manufactured vehicles as well. While GM dropped its sponsorship for the 2009 season due to financial issues, the GM branding was not removed from the fountain. Instead, signs for Chrysler and Ford were also added to the display, along with the message, the Detroit Tigers support our automakers. In 2010, GM returned to sponsoring this display, now known as the Chevrolet Fountain. On August 15, 2011, in Comerica Park, Jim Tomey, then playing for the Minnesota Twins, became the eighth player in baseball history to hit 600 career home runs. For 19 years, I was a Little League coach in Madison Heights, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. I had three sons, so I went through the program quite some time. Many times we got to be the Detroit Tigers Little League Team of the Day, and the players could go on the field 
before the game, much like those young ladies got to do at the beginning of this video. And I can tell you, myself and my young players, when they would stand there and look at how far it was to actually hit a major league home run, they were in complete awe. The Tigers organization and players were gracious hosts anytime we did that. And it was always a pleasure and it was fascinating to be on the field at Comerica Park. Unfortunately on this day, Miguel Cabrera neither hit a home run or even got a base hit, so the numbers didn't change. Due to previous plans, we had to leave the game early, but it didn't matter. The Tigers still lost. As we left the stadium, I just took some overhead shots of the first floor from the second floor catwalk. That's one of the entrances to the stadium, open now because people are leaving. To the right up there is the parking garage that's attached to the stadium. One of the gift shops, there's numerous gift shops around the stadium. And that's a view outside the stadium at the entrance that we were looking at from the second deck. There are 33 additional Tigers sculptures around the stadium with lighted baseballs in their mouth. That large Tiger is outside the main entry of Comerica Park. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, this is Peter. Thanks for watching Guest Adventures, where everyone is a guest, including me. I appreciate all your support. I'd also ask if you'd hit that like button and share the video so others can see it. And of course, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss a single upload. Thanks again for watching Guest Adventures, and I'll see you on the next one.